Tucsonans are frequently waiting on hold when they call 911. The calls are usually being answered pretty quickly, but they regularly hold for minutes when callers want to talk to the police. Yes, News 4 Tucson Sam Salzweil has that investigation. I have the longest 911 wait times from last month. On the 26th, a caller was holding more than 15 minutes. Even a call that was considered a high priority emergency waited almost two minutes. I called 911 immediately and the bartender also called 911 and we were put on hold. This is video of Frank Silverman using a stun gun in his bar after a customer tried to fight. He says his 911 hold was about five minutes. When he was finally connected, he appreciated the quick response from Tucson police. When we call 911, we need help. And, and when it doesn't come or you put on hold, it's very frustrating. They said, I need to transfer you or I'm transferring you to emergency communications. And I said, okay. You have reached the Tucson Police Department's emergency communication call center. Stay on the line for the next available emergency call taker. Robert Welch said on February 6th, he called 911 to report an erratic driver. He was going uh, hell bent. Uh, eastbound the westbound lane. I thought he was being chased. He said he waited about three minutes. I never expected to to get into a queue on a 911 call. Uh, if uh, three minutes is is life and death. Last year on September 26th, a 911 call center employee wrote in an email: "Small child wandering alone on hold for six minutes. Man lying face down in the dirt on hold for over eight minutes. Breaking glass and people screaming." on hold nearly nine minutes. A physical fight, on hold nearly nine minutes. These are occurring daily. And on one call, the first thing I heard was a male screaming at me. What took you so long to answer? They're shooting at us. And he's not the only one. About three weeks later, an email was sent by a different employee. I know what it's like to come in on a day where short staffed and sit 911 with one other person while transferring to TPD knowing each call will hold for minutes due to their low staffing as well. Some days we'll answer the 911 call and hear a fight or a domestic violence situation and transfer it on the priority line only to hear it ring and ring and ring. When I sit over at TPD and take calls there, it's very frustrating to try to provide good customer service while keeping the call as short as possible to be available for the next one because the queue is red. Then in December, the city council discussed changes at emergency services. We are uh, watching very closely uh, both the chemistry of the, you know, the dispatchers uh, and making sure that they have what they need. And, and quite frankly, they haven't. I had been privy to uh, concerns about people leaving uh, because of the pay that the city of Tucson had compared to other um, cities in the region. We have been working very diligently as a part of this consolidation to address some of those issues that they have. And, and quite frankly, the, the biggest one, although pay was mentioned, was getting additional staff to help them and, and cover them so they could take their time off. In that meeting, the council created this new department. They used to be employees of police and fire. Now they're all under a department that's independent. Ross Edelman took over this year after a long career in the military and private sector, then spending the past few years working for the city. 27 years Marine Corps, uh, retired colonel. Uh, my whole career was command control communications. He's trying to cross train more employees to reduce police weights. What can we do to make that stop happening now? <clears throat> What we can do to make this happen now is continue with our training track, continue with getting our supervisors more embedded on the floor, continue to uh, try to pinpoint down as those are occurring and see what we can do to get in front of it. I do know that the number of those kinds of, of long holds has decreased. Edelman says he has an 18 month plan. He's confident we'll make this one of the best emergency operations in the country. Are we gonna have five minute wait times 17 months from now still? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't <clears throat> I don't anticipate seeing that as we get near the end of, of the journey. Edelman said I should keep checking on the progress in his new department, 
That's an invitation I plan on accepting. The department is hiring with pay starting at $17.50 per hour. Frustrated about Tucson Police Department's not so rapid response, especially since he says he's given officers everything they need to solve the case. News 4 Tucson's Sam Falls Wadle has more on this News 4 Tucson investigation. Despite a felony theft, surveillance video, and an undisputable license plate number, the manager of the business says he's heard nothing from the police in weeks. Ryan Holyfield runs Ram Plumbing near Grant and Silverbell. On February 3rd, one of his employees found a trailer stolen. So they called the Tucson Police Department. They said they had no one available and that they didn't come until that Monday. The video appears to show a man breaking off a lock and throwing it, possibly leaving fingerprints. The business gave police the video, the lock, and license plate of their trailer. Then two days after police took the report, an employee called 911 saying he saw the van pulling the stolen trailer. It started near Glen and Alvernon, but he followed for miles around the Fort Lowell corridor. The driver eventually sped off, possibly because he realized he was being watched. He was behind him, followed him for a while. They kept telling him that they were going to send a, an officer and never did. But he did get this photo with the license plate. The paint on the employee's picture looks similar to the surveillance video. We've handed them everything on a silver platter. Uh, we've got fingerprints, we've had the van, we had video surveillance, everything. The theft was about three weeks ago. If this would have happened in any other of the surrounding cities, they'd have been on it. They, they'd have been right there to catch it. With all the evidence that they have, there's no doubt they would have they would have been right there to grab the guy. Sergeant Job Dickinson is a board member of the Tucson Police Officers Association. The steps in this case are just basic police work. Ten years ago, we used to be able to go up and follow up on this information uh, the day of. He said because of pay, the department is short staffed. Felonies are serious. However, this is a property crime um, and there's lots of violent crimes. Lieutenant Jim Wakefield says officers in that area we're working 42 other calls at the time. It's approximately 4.30 in the afternoon. We're heavily inundated with traffic accidents uh, and other types of events that, that often drain our, our finite resources. He says officers care about these quality of life crimes and they'd like to return property right away. Last year, the department worked 200,000 emergency calls. Why don't you have enough officers working on the streets right now? Well, I wouldn't say that. I would say that we do a pretty good job at triaging the, the events that we've got as they come in based on the facts uh, and circumstances that, that are presented to us. As of Friday, there was no report of this trailer being recovered. It's possible the individual is still engaged in criminal activity or engaged in, in property crime type of activity. Generating more police reports that you guys have to go investigate? Yes. It just seems like this is what he does. So I think you need to get him off the street and I think it closed a lot of cases. Lieutenant Wakefield says the van does not appear to be stolen and that license plate appears to be a workable lead. After I talked to Lieutenant Wakefield on Friday, he called back and said an officer checked on the address linked to that license plate. The van and trailer were not there at the time. Police always say if you see something, say something. But we found out that process isn't always that easy. News 4 Tucson, Sam Sells Wedel investigates. We've said on the news many times, if you have information on this case, call 911 or 88 crime. Last week, I called 911. Maybe the police could not take action on my call. Maybe my tip wasn't very good, but I found out talking to the police had a lot of obstacles. Heading towards Speedway, uh, it's a white van with uh, some messed up paint on the back. That's me on the phone with 911. Last month, this trailer was stolen from Ram Plumbing. Then one of the employees saw the van pulling the trailer and police did not respond to the call in time to make an arrest. Ryan Holyfield is the company manager who said in a previous report that the case was handed to police on a silver platter. If this would have happened in any other of the surrounding cities, they'd have been on it. They, they'd have been right there to catch it. With all the evidence that they have, there's no doubt they would have, they would have been right there to grab the guy. Last Friday, I believe I saw that van driving down Oracle Road. We don't want you to follow the vehicle, okay? The call taker may have been right, but I wanted to follow up and let detectives know, I think the van has a new license plate. I'm going to call 911 and uh, try to provide a tip um, in this criminal investigation. 911, what is the emergency? Hi there, I want to provide a tip in a uh, criminal case to Tucson Police. Okay, thank you. Okay. Central investigation.
Call ended. I just got disconnected um, trying to talk to TPD's auto theft unit, I believe. Okay, I'll reconnect you. Stay on the phone. You have reached the Tucson Police Department's emergency communication call center. Stay on the line for the next available emergency call taker. You have reached the Tucson Police Department's emergency communication call center. Stay on the Tucson Police, Trudeau. Hi there, I'm trying to uh, provide a, I'm trying to provide a tip in a case. Okay, the number is 520. Thank you very much. You have reached the Central Investigations Division. If you need to make a report, please hang up and call 791. Please try your call again soon. Thank you. Please call again. Thank you. Goodbye. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. We're unable to complete your call. Holyfield was out of town, so I talked to him on the phone. Knowing that you can't even get a tip out to anybody to even give a hand to try to get somebody like this off the streets, it kind of gives you a feeling of uh, hopelessness. Uh, what good is it to even call the cops at this point? So it's now Monday. On Friday, I made a couple unsuccessful attempts to talk to police uh, to provide a tip to follow up in a case, and I was not very successful. Um, so I actually just Googled the Tucson Police uh, non-emergency phone number, and I'm going to try to give it a call. Here Tucson Police Department non-emergency and general information line. For detectives assigned to auto theft, burglary, and fraud details, please call 791-5171. And the call immediately disconnected when I believe somebody tried to answer. Let's try this again. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. We're unable to complete your call. I can't help but wonder if if you're this white van's neighbor and he's parked next to you every day and you want to report this, I'm wondering if anybody's going to take this report or if anybody's tried to make a tip better than the one I've provided here. Tucson police were unable to explain what happened or why it happened. A sergeant did say they were looking into it. After I told TPD's public information office about my experience and that I was doing this report, a detective assigned to the case did call me and he took my tip. A Tucson family was hoping for a more thorough investigation after a man was nearly killed in a hit and run crash. He's still recovering after hours of surgery. News 4 Tucson Sam Salzwedel has that investigation. Seven pedestrians have been killed on Tucson streets so far this year. On Tuesday morning, that number almost went up to eight. And the victim's family is upset about the follow-up efforts by the Tucson Police Department. This is where her car came up onto the sidewalk. Based on the condition of that sign and the, the sound of the collision I heard, she was moving at a pretty good clip. He was screaming for help when a neighbor heard the commotion. He did say that she stopped the car, got out, and said, oh my God, and got back in the car and drove off. Near Reed Park, walking on the sidewalk, Tracy Tolan's dad was almost killed. He jumped out of the way and a car crushed his foot. I don't understand why the police department isn't investigating it more. Toland returned to the scene to conduct her own investigation. This was a piece of the vehicle that I found laying in the debris in this field. Tucson police say the officer's first job is to take care of the patient. This case did not appear to be life threatening, so they would not send a detective. The responding officer is responsible for picking up the evidence. We took this to the dealership and we asked them if they could identify the vehicle based on this part and they were able to identify the vehicle. They made flyers. They believe it was a dark red or maroon Hyundai Sonata. I know it's not their fault my dad was hit, but they have a responsibility to my dad, to the community, to keep us safe and to do their due diligence in trying to solve crimes. This was a crime. The officer even went to the hospital and gave the family his mobile phone number. 
but he never returned to the scene to collect what appears to be important evidence. My dad's very lucky, but somebody else might not be. Somebody else wasn't so lucky. Last October near Campbell and Glen, a hit and run did kill a pedestrian. According to the police report, a 911 call was made at 810 regarding a collision involving a pedestrian. Officers did not arrive on scene at the collision until 840 and items of evidence had been run over due to delayed response time. This crash was investigated by a detective. It makes me feel really frustrated that um, the police department doesn't have enough resources that there maybe is mismanagement in our city and it's left to angry victims to go out and do their own investigation and I feel helpless. The family is offering a $2,500 reward for a tip that holds this driver responsible. Tucson police did not make anybody available for an on-camera interview. On the phone, a sergeant did tell me they have six detectives for this type of crime and it is not ignored. Tucson police officers and domestic violence victims are saying call response times are dangerously long. Sam Salzwedo even spoke to a retired sergeant who says the delays could be deadly in a News 4 Tucson investigation. Just a sample of the public records we obtained show calls for police service taking hours. Some of those calls were for violations of orders of protection. Women who filed court orders to keep their exes away say those papers didn't do much to protect them. He's just a horrible guy. I didn't trust him around my daughter. He's unpredictable. Jane does not want to reveal her full name. She has an order of protection against her ex-boyfriend. She says she had to call police on him multiple times. He would always leave when I went to call them, so in that way it was a deterrent, I guess but I hoped that they would stop him from coming. Yeah. Other cases show police responses that may be dangerously long. This woman filed an order of protection that says her boyfriend beat her up and threatened to kill her. When she called police on him, officers arrived about one hour later. Last April, another woman called 911 because an ex-boyfriend was knocking at her door and window. She had an order of protection against him. An officer did not arrive for four hours. Doug Music is a retired Tucson Police Department sergeant. His last assignment was supervising the domestic violence unit. Domestic violence is the most dangerous calls that we respond to. He says responses are too slow and detectives are not doing follow-up investigations. In a DV call, that person is going to come back and it's going to escalate. And every time they come back, it's going to re-escalate and it's going to get worse and worse and worse until somebody gets killed or an officer shows up and it's a very explosive situation and an officer gets hurt. Generally, officers can only make an arrest if they catch somebody in the act of violating the order, but that requires a quick response. One of those cases is going to erupt and somebody's going to die. And I have no doubt that's going to happen, and I'm surprised that it hasn't already, but you know, I'd, I'd guarantee that it will. The Tucson Police Officers Association provided this small sample of records. Uh, Roland Gutierrez is TPOA's president and a TPD patrol sergeant. Cops are up, upset right now. They're frustrated. They're, they're more embarrassed that they're not able to provide the quality of service that the citizens of Tucson deserve. He says the only solution is better officer retention. Tucson trains them, but they leave to other agencies. The solution is getting more cops on the street, having more cops to actually respond to these calls because this is just one aspect that isn't getting a appropriate police response. There's many other calls that are getting the same negative response as well. Tucson City Council Member Steve Kazachik says TPD needs to consider making those order protection calls a higher priority. As to staffing, we have academies in place. Nobody's asleep at the wheel. Uh, we have lots of applicants. The challenge, though, is finding qualified applicants. He says public safety is a priority, but not the only one. Every year we look at this during our budget cycle. Uh, TPD competes with the fire department. They compete with roads. They compete with parks. They compete with all the other, all the other core services that we offer within the city of Tucson. Until more officers are available, orders of protection don't provide as much protection as victims want. It was a different officer. And she said, you know, I'm sure somebody's already told you this, but this is just a piece of paper. And so it was the opposite of what he said. And it made me feel 
it made me feel scared a little bit. An order of protection could be effective if the officers are able to respond. I don't want that on my conscience. I don't think any officer or detective wants to respond to a call and go, man, I wish we could have got here sooner because now somebody's, somebody's dead. This fiscal year, the city has $3.9 million budgeted to train more officers. Victims and officers still strongly urge victims to get orders of protection in violent relationships.